Hello, Trade Site Forex Chat and International Economic Data Preview for the week beginning Sunday, the 15th of December, 2013, and ending Friday the 20th as we head into the end of the year already. Unbelievable. Here's the dollar index daily chart on the right side of your screen to start. And nothing new to say here, really. We are, uh, you can see if I go to projection mode based on what we did on Friday, we've just uh, reset the nine bar count that was in place going through the downside. And we're stuck between two static trend lines. And uh, we did break a little this week to the downside. It's got us some winners early in the week, but then things really flattened out again. And uh, don't expect much else. Going into the back half of the year, here's the Aussie dollar. You can see the 13 sell signal on the seeker that we pointed out back in October. High so far. Got a nice inverted cup of break under that would be uh, a strong play of the downside, obviously, and, strength of the, and good for strength in the dollar. Here's the uh, pound dollar, on the other hand. Uh, playing with that risk line off of this 13 sell signal back over here. Look how it hit it twice. Can't get through. Can't get a close and confirmation above. Really using that risk level. That's amazing technical action right there. And even more so on the euro. Take a look at this. Nine bar down move we had at the end of October going into November. We've crawled back up. And the high pip tick of the week was the static trend line of that move. That's the green line. Note that this is basically a cup formation. So a little bit of sideways action and then a breakout would give us a cup and handle, kind of like what we saw back in July, August, and September. And uh, that would be strong in a breakout as well. That would be for weakness in the dollar. Now, let's take a look at some of the interweek action. Here's the Aussie uh, during the week. Uh, you've got uh, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday. So this is the whole week right here. And pretty flat early. Had a spike on some news uh, later in the week. Let's take a look at uh, the pound. Dollar and 30 minute bars for the week, and you know, lost uh, about 20, 30, yeah, 40 pips for the week basically. And you can see the total range for the week here is 200 pips, uh, so that's not that exciting, but we did have a couple winners here. And meanwhile, on the euro total range for the week from high to low, uh, 30 at 10 to 30, about 120 pips. That's usually average daily range, not average weekly range. And you'll see, I mean, this was just horribly flat, there was nothing exciting uh, at all in the euro. So uh, nothing to look at from that perspective in terms of uh, the interweek action to guide us. Uh, the daily chart's showing some mixed signals. There's a pattern on the long side of the euro and a pattern on the short side uh, in the pound. But uh, other than that, we really don't have uh, much to point to. So let's get into the economic data that's going to be coming out this next week. And uh, remember, this is triple expiration week for the markets. This is when uh, options and futures and commodities expire does have some impact on Forex because the currency options expire as well. Usually makes things pretty slow next Friday and probably Thursday as well. Uh, so we'll start out with Sunday. A couple numbers out of Japan, the tank and manufacturing and non-manufacturing indices. Right move HPI data out of uh, the UK, France, uh, I'm sorry, France, German, and the broad European flash services and manufacturing PMI data along with Italian trade balance and then the broad European trade balance at 5 a.m. Eastern time Monday morning, first night of the week to start the the week out there, we've got some minor numbers out of the U.S. Uh, flash manufacturing, PMI data there, capacity utilization, industrial production. Uh, Monday night out of Australia, they got the minutes of the last uh, Bank of Australia meeting, the RBA, uh, uh, sorry, the CB leading index, new motor vehicle sales. Uh, going into Tuesday, a lot of data dumping at 4.30 a.m. Eastern time out of the U.K., including the CPI, PPI, RPI, Core CPI, HPI. Ooh, that's a lot of PIs. All right, and we've got uh, the same out of uh, the broad European data, core CPI and CPI, zoo economic sentiment, Euro group meetings. Uh, we've got uh, manufacturing sales in Canada in the morning on Tuesday. We've got the CPI here in the U.S. That's one of our big three, so we'd be half size ahead of that, along with current account and a housing market number. Current account out of New Zealand as well, and then the MI leading index out of Australia that night. Japan's trade balance, everybody doing trade balance this week. Japan's trade bounce at 6.50 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. Uh, and then we get into more Wednesday morning where UK's got their unemployment rate. Um, we've got uh, some meetings in Europe. CB realized sales out of the UK. Canada's wholesale sales. And then the U.S. housing starts and building permits data, both for October and September. Crude oil inventories. Uh, we've got a Fed meeting this week, two-day Fed meeting, starting Tuesday, ending Wednesday, right before the uh, markets. And that's the Wednesday of uh, options week. So it's going to be options unraveling potentially on Wednesday. So you don't usually see it. You might see this one on Thursday then with the two-day Fed meeting uh, because it's unlikely that we're going to get a lot of exciting action with the Fed meeting. Uh, so that'll probably be Thursday. GDP out of New Zealand on uh, Wednesday evening. 
Uh, we've got trade balance out of Switzerland, current account out of Europe, retail sales out of the UK, Spanish 10-year bond auction out of Europe, unemployment claims out of the US, existing home sales out of the US, Philly Fed, CB leading index, Natty Gas, all out of the US. Then visitor arrivals out of New Zealand, got uh, consumer confidence out of Europe, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, out of the UK specifically, New Zealand credit card spending, monetary policy statement out of Japan, and the Bank of Japan uh, press conference, so you're gonna get a rate announcement out of Japan going into Friday. German PPI and consumer climate, UK's got their current account, final GDP for the third quarter, public sector net borrowing, index of services, revised business investment, Europe's got Italian retail sales, and then we wrap up Friday with CPI out of Canada, retail sales out of Canada, the final GDP for Q3 out of the U.S., European consumer confidence, that is it, and then the Fed chairman nomination vote for Yellen. So it is kind of a busy week. There's a lot going on. you got a Fed meeting, You've got uh, which is two-day. You've got options unraveling and expiration for triple. Uh, you've got uh, CPI and a lot of it. You've got a lot of early week action uh, data out of uh, – uh, Europe as well. So there's plenty to get the market moving. Hopefully we get one more last week of making some money before it inevitably dies off for Christmas and New Year's week. Everybody have a great week. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal11. We will be in the trading lab making calls as usual.